Уважаемые телезрители, вы уже знаете, что в нашу страну впервые приехал на гастроли известный английский певец, композитор и пианист Элтон Джон. И вот перед своим последним концертом в Москве он э, дал интервью центральному телевидению, и мы вместе с прекрасно известным вам Анатолием Ивановичем Овсяником хотим задать нашему гостю несколько вопросов. Анатолий Иванович, теперь слово вам. Ну, Татьяна Юрьевна, вероятно, прежде всего мы спросим нашего гостя о его впечатлениях. Он был в Ленинграде. Да, в общем, он в впервые в Москве. Well, Elton John, uh, we are glad that you are here in our studio. Thank you. Спасибо. Well, you're all in Russian. Oh, just one word, спасибо. Yeah, uh, anyhow, we heard that you mm, had a stay in Leningrad, and not only performing in Leningrad and in Moscow, but uh, you enjoyed some sightseeing. Oh, yes. Well, we went to Leningrad first, and it was such a beautiful city. I think everybody who was on the tour, um, other musician uh, and people in the film crew uh, and sort of other people around us could not believe how beautiful Leningrad was. It was absolutely magnificent. Yeah, and uh, the, the audience? Very, very good. I mean, I was very worried the first night because it was a big challenge to come to the Soviet Union to play because well, we don't know what the audiences are like, but uh, they've been very, very warm and receptive audiences throughout the whole uh, seven concerts so far. Yeah. And now some musical questions. Татьяна Юрьевна, теперь музыкальные вопросы нашим Теперь же, собственно, тема нашего интервью, музыкальные вопросы. Но в первую очередь я хочу спросить вас, каковы излюбленные сюжеты ваших песен, к которым вы часто возвращаетесь, и в этом смысле рассказать, я прошу о вашем соавторе, Берни Тутмия. When you hear them over and over again in concert, it's very difficult to choose one song which is a favorite. Um, I think what, one of my f most favorite songs is a song called Sorry Seems to be the Hardest Word, which comes from an LP called Blue Moves. Um, I prefer my slower songs because I'm a better um, writer of slower songs and uh, sad songs than I probably am of fast songs. Although I like to write fast songs, some people are better at it than I am. Um, so. I, I like very sad music. Oh, I like you're, you're like a chansonnier. You're writing and, <laughs> and singing. Yes. Well, I don't write the lyrics. I mostly, mm. mostly write the melodies. And I always like basically very sad melodies. I like funeral music. В журнале Англия, который издают в нашей стране, мы прочли о том, что Элтон Джон является руководителем Национального молодежного театра. Что это за театр? Можно не сказать. Если это по-прежнему соответствует действительности, разумеется. Oh, um, in in England, yes, um, I'm on the council of the National Youth Theatre, um, which is a theatre pro that provides uh, people who are at school, young children at school. Uh, in the summer holidays, they all come down to London from different parts of the country and they perform plays uh, and they tour. They've just come back from the United States and Canada on tour. And it, it's, it's a very good organization, yes, and try and help young people to sort of make their first mark on the stage. Еще вопрос Элтона Джона часто называют Шопеном рок-музыки. А каково действительно его отношение к музыкальной классике? Some people call you Chopin of music. What is your attitude towards classical music? Um, well, I was, I started playing piano uh, by ear and then my parents made me have lessons and which as a child I sort of I didn't like very much because I wanted to go outside and play football and I won a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Music in London for five years and when I look back on it now I must have enjoyed it. At the time again I was very resentful because I wanted to go and play football with my friends but it taught me a lot and um, I used to play, I used to like playing Bach and Chopin, they were my favorite two uh, writers for the piano. Um, and I think I appreciate classical music far more now than I did then, because I was a bit young, and as I say, I, I, wasn't, I was quite a good pianist, but I didn't really want to continue playing classical music. But I like classical music now much more than I did. <laughs> yeah, so many of our uh, modernistic music uh, now are being performed. We have heard uh, and we have shown on our TV uh, those famous punks Mm, other <laughs> there. It would be interesting to know your opinion about uh, such a kind of music. Well, it's a totally, um, it's a totally different form of music. It's like the classic form of painting, and then it's like getting to Dadaism and Cubism. Mm -hmm. um, um, people sort of don't understand it. It's very primitive, um, but the, it's not concentrated so much on the melody force as more as on the raw and energetic 
workforce. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, a lot of young people like that. Times change. So um, you you agreeing that it's more I think sensation it's about it than the real music, you know? Yes, but it's it's a feeling uh, rather than the actual music. Um, but it's it's a, an enjoyable <laughs> feeling sometimes. Um, I don't particularly like some of it, and on the other hand, I I do like some of it. It depends. But I think on the whole, in general, it's yeah, been very good uh, because at least it gets young people <laughs> starting to play instruments. Yes, but unfortunately, we have heard that uh, the fate of those bands have been uh, very. Uh, well, uh, some of them have got uh, into prison, some of them, you know, some murders. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, at least well, no, that's that, maybe that the, the consequence of those sensations. Um, I don't think so. I think um, that happened not with just punks, that happens with young people all the time. Um, it's not, not really got anything to do with punks. I don't, I don't really so think... So it's a problem of youth. It's, it's, a, it's a problem of youth that um, we do have in... Mm. The, Western civilization. Absolutely. Oh. I don't think you can blame it on punk or music. It's um it's a problem it's more of society. So, so, sociological yeah. phenomenon. Yeah. Anatoly Ivanovich, и наши зрители и вся, так сказать, мировая зарубежная пресса уже не раз обращали внимание на, так сказать, экстравагантность выступления нашего гостя, на эксцентрику его актёрского образа. Как вы думаете? Да, это заметно здесь. Это заметно здесь на этом диске. Удобно нам спросить нашего гостя о том, что стоит за всем этим, что он хочет сказать вот это image that you want to conserve and now you have this cap and is it uh, always that you <laughs> prefer this kind of uh, clothes, or this kind of image? Uh, well, <laughs> when I was very young, I was not allowed to wear the clothes that I wanted to. And so, consequently, since then, <laughs> I've always... Um, I go from a period of... Uh, uh, from time, I wear suits sometimes. You wouldn't recognize me, so I'm very sober with a suit and tie on. Um, I wear clothes um, to express my feelings at the moment. Um, it changes again. My mm -hmm. moods change and so does my clothes. I don't really consider the clothes to be that much important uh, towards my music. I think a lot of people have said that my music has suffered because of my clothes, which is absolutely ludicrous. I mean, there's no <laughs> logic in that. Um, but um, I do a lot of things with my tongue in my cheek. Um, I try to test people and see how far they can go and see how far I can get away with things. I'm a bit naughty like that. Um, <laughs> but for instance, the uh, oh. picture on the cover, yeah. um, it's uh, Windsor Castle uh, hmm. in England. Это um, последний диск, да? Mm. That's, that's, that's why I live near there. And Чем он отличается, mm. кстати, от предыдущих? Mm. I, I, I hate having my photograph Его самые характерные yeah. черты. Yeah. Very precious disc, though? I mean, what kind of music in that, in that disc? Um, varied. I have varied oh. sorts of uh, influences. Um, there's rock and roll, there's ballads, there's classically influenced things, there's uh, American uh, bluesy things. Um, a very diverse taste of oh, music. Yes. Do you think, uh, Alfin, that going away from Russia, you will get some Russian influence? <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, I think I'm going to go back to England for three or four days, and I'm, then I'm going to France because I have to record in August. And I will write some songs, and I will definitely, whether it be a song, it'd probably be a piece of music, because uh, mm -hmm. I like to write instrumental music. And, uh, oh yes, definitely, I think I've gleaned something from uh, the atmosphere in Russia to write something, absolutely, yes. I went to Brazil, and I came back, and I wrote something from Brazil, so mm -hmm. I was only there four days. I think Russia's had a far bigger influence on me than, say, Brazil had. Yes, and so the impression that you have now... <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> yes, I mean, I can't, you know, I, we've had a great time. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's tremendous been tremendously kind to us and uh, hopefully we will come back i would like to come back very much ну что ж наш гость говорит что на него очень большое впечатление произвела эта поездка и вот вернувшись он чуть-чуть я понимаю но что своему мы пожелаем нашему гостю именно вот успехов его такого создания новых произведений уже так сказать на основании вот этой поездки к нам советский союз да конечно просто от имени телезрителей мы с удовольствием Пожелаем Элтону Джону новых творческих радостей, новых yeah, прекрасных песен, uh, которые бы также любили и знали во всем мире, как и у него на родине. Things, and, uh, ну и на, на прощание yeah. мы хотим попросить But, uh, Элтона Джона. Goodbye, uh, request, request? Для наших телезрителей yes. исполнить какую-нибудь песню, а если можно выполнить well, непосредственно uh, мою просьбу, uh, то я Татьяна, очень хотела попросить much, песню, so чтобы Элтон Джон исполнил песню «Свеча на ветру» в памяти Мерлин Монро. Можно? Goodbye, Norma Jean Though I never knew you at 
all you have the grace to hold yourself While those around you crawl They crawled out of the woodwork And they whispered into your brain They said you on the treadmill And they made you change your name And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to When the rain set in And I would have liked to know you But I was just a kid Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did Loneliness was tough The toughest role you ever played Hollywood created a superstar Fame was the price you pay And even when you die Oh, the press still hounded you All the papers had to say Was that Marilyn was found in the news And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in And I would have liked to know you But I was just a kid Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did More than just a Marilyn Monroe And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to When the rain set in And I would have liked to know you But I was just a kid Your candle burned out long before Legend ever did. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. You're high above, you are pure and you're gentle 
with the grace of a dove. And I wonder sometimes, and I know I'm unkind, but I need you to turn to. But I act so blind, oh, I need you to turn to. But I lose control. 